As the dry season draws to a close, the six females of the Hollywood Pride remain in exile, driven to the edge of their territory by the nomads. But the four brothers could be their best hope for the future. Hopefully this means the Hollywoods will accept the nomads, or this means that they're just going to push the Hollywoods north. Meanwhile, the MK Pride is relishing its victory over the nomads. Oh wow, it really does not look pleasant. But in this time of extremes... Disaster can strike in an instant. Sarabi's got this huge wound, which looks like a buffalo horn, has basically ripped her right open. And one of the cubs stares death in the face. It's terrible watching a tiny cub suffer like this. A change of fortune could bring the season to a tragic end. In Zambia's Lawangwa Valley, two neighboring prides lay claim to the land. The once powerful MKs, with numbers still rising, and the Hollywood females, who must breed to secure their future. Both prides now face the nomads. A wild card gang of males looking for new territory. Wildlife filmmakers Nathan Pilcher and Sam Davis are in the middle of the action. What's the one? They'll witness every triumph and every tragedy. Can these two prize beat the odds? and survive the greatest challenge of their lives. It's October. Luangwa hasn't seen a drop of rain for six months. Scorching temperatures soar above 110 degrees. The extreme conditions mean death is everywhere. Wildlife filmmakers Sam Davis and Nathan Pilcher are also feeling the heat. You can see the condition of the animals are really struggling. Life for them must be so difficult out here. Hardly any food, hardly any water in this temperature. The same for us, because I think we start to go a little bit cuckoo. Yeah, a little bit wonky in the head. It's really hot, so I'm trying to protect my face. But in the south, the MK Lion Pride is thriving. Banish the nomads from their pride lands and are taking full advantage of the dry season woes. A 15 strong hunting party positions itself in the grass near the only reliable water source for miles around the Luangwa River. The dwindling water lures in thirsty prey. An all-you-can-eat buffet for the lions. Their target this morning is 200 yards away. A hundred-strong herd of Cape buffalo. But there's no need for the lions to attack in the open. The buffalo will walk right past them when they've quenched their thirst. Sarabi, the pride's most experienced lioness, eyes them carefully. The pride follows her lead. 
and surrounds a straggler at the back. The youngest lioness, Maya, puts herself in the path of the deadly horns. It's a dangerous distraction ploy. Sarabi sprints in to add to the confusion. And the pride closes in. The MK Lions will eat like royalty today. They must take advantage of the easy hunting while they can. In a week, the rains will come, and conditions in their pride lands will change drastically. The grasslands will flush green. Water holes will fill, and prey will disperse across the entire valley. Nathan and Sam are reaching the end of their three months embedded in the park. When the rains flood the valley, following the lions becomes impossible, and the crew must leave. They've witnessed the resurgence of the MK Pride, but Nathan and Sam might not see a happy ending for the MKs after all. The half-ton buffalo went down fighting. Sarabi's got this huge wound down her rear thigh, which looks like a buffalo horn has basically ripped her right open. There's a huge chunk of flesh just hanging on the side. I really hope she's OK. This could be a grave injury. And it couldn't have come at a worse time. The coming rains will scatter the wildlife far from the river. The lions must follow or starve. If Zarabi can't keep up with her family, She's in trouble. Without their best hunter, the MK Pride might not stay on top for long. Meanwhile, in the neighboring Pride lands, Sam's out looking for some recent trespassers. With the Hollywood lionesses in exile far to the north, Strange lions recently appeared near camp. Sam finds some lions. But it's not the trespassers who seem to have moved on. This is the nomads. So we've just come across the four nomads and they are literally right next door to our camp. Our camp is right over here. And we're just busy watching them because we've got some zebras and some motorbike walking past. They're looking at them, but to be honest, they don't seem interested enough to actually hunt. When they first arrived, the males attacked the all-female Hollywood pride. But recently, the nomads staked out the females across the river and showed signs that they want to mate with the Hollywoods. It just seemed like nothing really gains their interest other than females at this point. So hopefully this means they're actually going to reconnect and the Hollywoods will accept the nomads, or this means that they're just going to push the Hollywoods even further north. The six Hollywood females are a perfect match. They're all sexually mature, but none of them 
has had cubs for three years. Uniting with four eligible brothers could be the beginning of a powerful dynasty. If the males can show better manners. The time has come for the females to end their exile in the north and return home. Matriarch Ava leads her family south. Toward a showdown with the nomads. Back in MK territory, pride mothers Rosa and Zuri are hiding their five cubs close to the river. The cubs are now about four and a half months old and growing increasingly adventurous. It's a dangerous stage for these five cubs at the moment because they're at that age where they're really starting to wander around and explore. They're becoming really, really curious. And five cubs is a lot of cubs for the mums to look after. It's a big job for the mums. The cubs should have been introduced to the whole MK pride already. But their nervous mothers, Rosa and Zuri, have resisted pride members' efforts to meet them. So the two mothers must do all the hunting and babysitting themselves. The cubs won't be fully weaned for another four months. So most of their nutrition still comes from their mother's milk. While exhausted Rosa and Zuri nap, the male cub, Spotty, hears something moving in the bushes. The mischievous cub can't resist investigating. He needs to be careful. A leopard wouldn't hesitate to kill a lion cub. It's a simple way to eliminate the competition. Spotty is far from safe. About a mile away, the rest of the MK Pride is sheltering from the heat, with bellies full. Injured Sarabi has moved slightly away from the group. Nathan can see how serious her wound is. It's incredibly deep, the whole... I mean, if you can imagine being scourged yourself with a huge chunk of flesh hanging off and having to carry on walking and chase your food down without a wince. Sarabi's weakened and in pain. But she won't face this crisis alone. Her daughter, Maya, follows her to the water. You can see quite an intensive bond here between these two females, their mother and daughter. Nine-year-old Sarabi has successfully guided the MK Pride through some challenging times. But this wound could throw everything into chaos. Just as we thought, the, the MKs were suddenly settled down and returned to their core territory and looked really relaxed. And a big injury like this really, I think, is going to have a bit of an impact because she's a major, major hunter. We really need this wound to heal. The pride needs its wise leader. back with Sarabi in the MKs, not far from last night's feed. So we've just come across the MKs down here on the beach having fed on the buffalo last night. There's quite a few of them lying around.
Arabi is still in pain. But as Nathan surveys the beach, it's not the female that draws his attention. There's actually, um, there's one of the cubs down there. This might be the first introduction. Oh, it's brilliant, he is. Nathan and Sam had been waiting for two months for the cubs to meet the whole pride. But the excitement quickly turns to confusion. I can only see one... I can only see one cub there. I think so we might have to just go down there and have a, have a proper look. There's no sign of the cub's mother or his siblings. This little youngster seems to be alone. a little concerned where his mother and uh, siblings are. Nathan's anxious to see how Spotty's older relatives react. I'm quite selective, greeting some of the members and, and skipping others. The females greet him warmly. Young Maya, his cousin, is gentle. But the teenage males are showing a little too much interest in him. Teshi is the oldest teenager, and this is the first cub he's ever seen. It's getting rough. He's obviously looking quite concerned and soft calling for his mum uh, and the other siblings, and he's now starting to wander off up the beach by himself. But he's walking into even more danger. The abandoned buffalo carcass has attracted hyenas. I'm a little bit worried for the, um, a little bit worried for the cub wandering all the way off by himself because we've just watched hyenas uh, run past and he's heading straight towards the kill where there's only hyenas and no lions. If a hyena does find them, that, that's the end. A hyena will quickly kill uh, a lion cub. I mean, I really hope his mum is up there or he turns around and comes back because a little cub by himself is not going to be able to, you know, stand a chance. Unable to intervene, Nathan can only watch as Spotty disappears into the bush. Eight miles to the north, the six Hollywood females have arrived back in the heart of their territory to reclaim their home. The nomads are waiting for them.
Shiva and her sister Zena size up the males on the other side of the clearing. This is the closest the two groups have been since the nomads attacked the Hollywoods three months ago. But Ava isn't showing any fear. She bravely approaches with Zena for backup. She appears to have a plan. This is outrageous flirting. Exposing her abdomen makes her extremely vulnerable. But it's clear. This experienced female knows how to manipulate males. Titus, the largest nomad, sent marks. He's interested. Following Ava's cue, Zeno works on the dominant nomad, Thor. She plays hard to get. senses are overwhelmed by the Hollywood's intoxicating pheromones. But before the Hollywoods commit, they need to know that the males will protect them and be worthy fathers. The females aren't ready to make this flirtation a permanent relationship just yet. As the day draws toward evening, the MK Lions are still on the beach. The little cub Spotty has stayed hidden in the bushes for hours. There's still no sign of his mother or his siblings. He's now been apart from them all day. You can occasionally hear the cub soft calling uh, for his mother. And um, the best thing for him to do, I think, is, is really stay hidden in this bush for the rest of the day. But Spotty's hungry. Without his mother Rose's milk, he's in danger of dehydration. First drives him out of his hideaway. He joins teenager Maya. She watches over her little cousin as he finally gets a well-needed drink. He seems to have touched to Maya. She's sort of taken quite a shine to him, playing around with him a bit. It's welcome company and protection. But Maya can't feed him. He desperately needs Rosa or Zuri. As the daylight fades, Spotty faces his first night without his mother. Darkness brings in new kinds of danger. It's when predators are most active. Nervous Spotty sticks close to injured Sarabi on the beach. Roars echo down the river. Distant territory claims. The pride responds. Agitated by the faraway calls, the MK set off to patrol their territory.
body's instinct tells him to stay put. He waits for his pride to return. But it isn't the MKs that appear. The hyenas are back. They're after scraps from a beached hippo carcass. Spotty desperately tries to climb the tree for safety. He only makes it a few feet into the branches. Not entirely out of reach. It's going to be a long night. Sam heads south towards Spotty's last location. The beach is quiet. Sam scours the bushes, hoping that somehow Spotty's made it. Wait, wait, there he is. I can see Spotty. He's under the bush. He's alive, but he's in dire straits. It's the start of the second day now, and Spotty is still alone. No sign of Mum. Yeah, he's been left alone by the rest of the Pride now, and he's looking really lonely. It's clear he's very hungry. He's been walking in and out of the bushes, just calling. Um, he looks really tired. I'm sure he spent a lot of the night, um, you know, quite lonely looking around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can hear calling behind us. It looks like Spotty has realized. He's starting to call. see that there's lionesses walking this way towards the riverside and I can only hope that it's the mums. If these aren't members of his pride, he's in big trouble. Spotty's he's starting to walk. Oh man, he's starting to follow them. I really hope that it's the mothers. Okay, Spotty is approaching the, the females that are drinking already. There's one female still drinking and he's approaching her. She actually seems to have quite enlarged nipples. Maybe she's a lactating female. Oh, no. That, that can't be the mother. Thankfully, it's one of his aunts, startled by his approach. And he, he seems quite confused. Several MK lionesses are there. Some of the females are greeting him. Still, uh, I can't I can't be sure if any of these are the mothers. I can see Sarabi's here. She's still got her wound on her leg from the buffalo hunt. I don't think that these are the moms. Spotty still can't feed, but at least under the protection of his pride, he can get a drink. That's really really good that he's drinking water right now it's been really hot the last couple of days and he needs to stay hydrated spotty's back in the company of his family but 
they can't give him what he really needs. It looks like Spotty will spend another day without his his mums, which means no food. He must be so hungry. It's been more than 36 hours since he last ate. And he's trying to find milk. Sam is losing hope. It was quite disappointing when I heard the, the soft calling coming through the bushes. I, I hoped with every fibre of my being that it was the, the mother's returning. But unfortunately, um, it wasn't. Spotty's condition is deteriorating fast. But now, he can only wait. Several miles upriver, Nathan is searching for the Hollywood pride, curious to see how things are developing with the nomads. So we've heard some lines falling in this direction, and um, it's right in the middle of the Hollywood territory. So hopefully, it's the the Hollywood. So if it is them, it'll be great. I mean, even better if the nomads are there with them. The rains are due any time now. It's getting hotter and hotter, and you can just feel the sort of the atmosphere is changing. You know, it's kind of building up to it, and we're basically running out of time. The rains will force the lions to move inland following prey. So there's a limited window of opportunity to find out if the Hollywoods accept the nomads as their mates. Nathan follows circling vultures and finds lions on a kill. So we've come across the nomads and actually it turns out to be the Hollywoods with them on this uh, buffalo kill here. Looks like all six of the Hollywoods are here. You can see Ava here with her collar. I and mean, I think that might be Xena down on the kill with the males. The last time the Hollywoods and the nomads shared a kill, the males attacked Ava. What's really nice to see is the, uh, the nomads and the... Uh, the Hollywood females seem to be relaxed. Um, there's a little bit of growling, but that's normal with feeding. Everyone wants all for themselves. But um, the fact that they're actually feeding together is a great thing. Zena's actually been really cheeky and uh, is trying to pull the, the buffalo carcass away from the males. The males seem to be letting her, her pull it away. I mean, it is early days, but this could be the first step towards the Hollywoods accepting the nomads. I mean, this is looking really, really quite positive, so fingers crossed they'll uh, settle down and establish a pride. The Hollywoods seem willing, but time will tell if the nomads really have matured enough for this last step. The females need to decide quickly. On the horizon, momentous change is coming. Rain clouds have started rolling towards the valley. The floods they bring will drive all the lions far inland to follow prey. South, Spotty is running out of time. He's alone again. The MK Pride has left. It's now been more than 48 hours since Spotty's seen his mother. Sam begins to worry that something sinister might have happened. I have no idea where she's gone or why she left him. It's getting to that point where you're wondering, where is she? Where are the cubs? Has something happened further inland?
I can see he's really getting hungry. He needs to feed, he needs milk from mum. When it seems things can't get any worse, Mother Nature unleashes her power. An early shower is the first rain he's ever felt. Its cold drops appear black on Spotty's coat. Suddenly, a lifeline appears in the gloom. It's Sarabi and one of her daughters. Spotty's elation at their arrival is clear. Sarabi's injury is still weeping, a sign of possible infection. But the stoic matriarch doesn't rest. For more than an hour, she calls to try to summon Rosa and Zuri. Seeing Sarabi call so loud and the vehicle is vibrating, this just gives me hope that maybe the mothers will hear her. You have to hope at this point because if you don't hope, then you know what's going to happen. Weak and racked with pain, Sarabi makes a huge effort. But there's no reply. Despite her wound, Sarabi and her daughter set off, perhaps in search of Spotty's mother. Spotty is alone again. By dawn, the rain showers have passed. Sarabi hasn't returned. And there's still no sign of the mothers. For Sam, the reality that Spotty might not make it is sinking in. So it's now day three with uh, this little cub, Spotty. He still hasn't found his mum. Yeah, it's really, it's heart-wrenching just watching him. Um, you know, he hasn't eaten now for a while, so he's starting to get quite weak. So we just have to hope that mum will come back, otherwise I, I don't know how long he'll, he'll hold up for. Sam's not allowed to intervene and can only bear witness to this possible slow death. You can say it's just nature and it's natural and, you know, survival of the, the fittest, but it's terrible watching a tiny cub suffer like this. Yeah, it's just something that, you know, it's not on my bucket list to film. We have to just have hope now that the mums will come. But if, if the rest of the part don't head this way, I don't see the mums coming back in this direction. It's it's not close to where they've been storing their cubs um, at the moment. So, yeah, I don't think there's any need for them to venture out this far, which is really, really worrying. And, um, yeah, it breaks my heart. Spotty retreats to the bush. Without food, he's growing weaker by the hour. In Hollywood territory, Ava and her pride are looking to cement their future with the nomads before the sunshine disappears. So far, all signs indicate that the males are here to stay. So we came across the four nomads this morning with Hollywood females. It's really nice to see them all here together. The females are ready to take the budding relationship to the next level. Zena approaches one of the males.
Yeah. And you've got Ava here as well. Looks like Thor is in the process of mating with her. After a tentative start, the mating continues through the day. And by the end of the afternoon, the union between the strong, independent Hollywoods and the powerful coalition of the Nomad Brothers seems secure. You know, having seen these Hollywoods for so many years and the last two years not had, well, three years now, not having had males around. It's, I mean, it's really great to see this, to think that the, the Hollywoods and the Nomads are settling down. This is really looking like a positive future for them. By next season, we might see some cubs. The next dynasty. The Hollywood's bloodline seems safe. But to the south, the MK's future generation looks more at risk than ever. Sam searching once more for Spotty. Without her realizing, he wandered off from his hiding place in the undergrowth. It's kind of hard to see inside. It's a really, really thick bush. Sam, do you copy? We have no sign of the cub. We've come to the next bush here. Just to have a look, maybe if he's returned to the old bush. Um, than we've been before. With the light fading fast, she scours the area. Well, maybe we'll see eyes. She's worried the desperate Spotty has tried to follow Sarabi's trail. That would be worst case scenario because he'd, he'd be lost and the mums would never know where he is. No sign of Spotty. Sam takes one more look by the river for signs of Spotty or the mothers. Don't see anything. There's no sign of him, no fresh tracks since the rains. It's likely that Spotty is lost forever. I am hoping that if Spotty didn't make it, that it was swift and that he hasn't suffered for too long. The disappearance of Rosa, Zuri, and the other four cubs is also a mystery Sam would like to solve. But time is running out. Uh, we're gonna have to be leaving soon because the whole park shuts down in the rainy season and it would be an amazing parting gift just to see the mums and the cubs one last time to make sure they're safe before we leave. Over the next few days, the rains appear with more frequency. There's only been quite heavy showers in, in sort of small localised areas and puddles, huge puddles have developed on the road. The mothers have been missing for more than a week. Sam and Nathan look everywhere. We're just in the area where the, the mothers and the cubs have generally always been hidden. Trying to find tracks. The worst case scenario is that uh, the mothers have lost a number of the cubs. Not looking very good at the moment. Uh... After days of searching, there's no sign of the mothers and cubs.
but Nathan does find most of their pride by the river. So we've actually got pretty much the rest of the uh, the MK pride here, all the youngsters, Kimber and Mayer and, and all the siblings, so a lot of the younger sort of teenage lions. But I think they actually seem to be hunting quite well, uh, which, which is great news because it's kind of showing that they're, they're capable of going on to the next level. The pride is really going to need those skills because their best hunter is absent. We've got most of the MK pride here together. However, Sarabi's missing. With Sarabi's wound, I really hope she's okay. Sarabi was last seen heading off into the night, calling for Spotty's mother. Sam and Nathan might never know if that was her last act to protect her pride. Unfortunately, the, the end of the season is basically here, so only time will tell. We won't know for another six months. It's almost time for the team to leave. Sam makes one last search for the four remaining cubs. So it's been a few days since we last saw Spotty, the lost cub. Um, kind of come to terms that he's gone. Uh, not seeing the mums and the cubs for so long now does make us worry because where are they? What's happened? But then... Oh, I think I can see something. There's movement in the distance. Oh, I can see cubs. There's two. Two cubbies playing. Three. Four. Four cubs so far. <gasps> Is that Spotty? I think this is Spotty. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's five cubs here. <laughs> Against overwhelming odds, Spotty has found his mother. Oh, Spotty. This is literally the most amazing, amazing morning. We have five cubs here. I, to be honest, I was like, it's not going to happen. This cub is not going to survive. And somehow these mothers have ma managed to, to find the cub. He's back with his mom. I, I actually can't believe it. Spotty is looking so good. He's looking fat, he's looking healthy, he's keeping up with the rest of the cubs. Um, yeah, it's so, so sweet to see. Thank goodness for Sarabi, uh, for looking after him, grooming him, and for calling mum, letting the mums know where little Spotty was. She really, she did a great job. Not only have all the cubs made it to the end of the dry season, I can't get over this. But they finally properly met their fathers. The punks are with them, watching over the next generation of the MK Pride as they enter a new chapter in the Luangwa Valley. I think, if anything, if the Cubs are as strong as Spotty, then they'll definitely make it because you rarely survived against all odds. After months following the lions, it's time for Nathan and Sam to leave. What an amazing season. It really has been. I mean, we've got cubs, which we didn't expect. Boys coming in and chasing all the prides all over the place. Yeah, let's hope that the Hollywoods do stick with the nomads and you know. oh, we'll love to see Hollywood cubs. Yeah. It has been a season like no other. And I can't wait to see what happens next.